Hello and welcome to a new adventure and welcome to New Brighton on the Wirral just opposite Liverpool and we're here today to look at this old-fashioned Victorian seaside resort and one iconic structure that used to stand here at New Brighton which would have made it very famous today had it still survived. So New Brighton is your typical working class seaside resort, or it was back in the day. Birkenhead and the Wirral was very heavy with industry back in the day, docks and all that traffic coming down the Mersey, the same as Liverpool. But all those workers and those people living here needed somewhere to let off some steam and go and enjoy themselves, especially in the Victorian era. And that was right here. Now what we're here to look at today is what used to stand over my shoulder upon that hill there, that grassy knoll, which looks nothing like it used to do back in the Victorian period. And we're here to see the new Brighton Tower. The new Brighton Tower took three years to complete and opened in 1900. It stood at 567 feet, 48 feet taller than the Blackpool Tower. It was the tallest building in Great Britain when it opened. But surprisingly, not many people ever knew it existed. Built on land at Rock Point in New Brighton, a typical Victorian seaside resort on the Wirral, and opposite the docks of Liverpool, it was designed to rival the Blackpool Tower, but in a more luxurious and elegant setting. With its manicured gardens, terraces, boating lakes and ornate buildings, it sounded like the Winter Gardens and Blackpool Tower combined. Both were hugely popular in Blackpool at the time. They brought in the same designers as the Blackpool Tower buildings and the Winter Gardens in Southport. To oversee the project, the construction of the steel lattice tower started in 1897 and completed over the next couple of years. Built using low carbon steel rather than wrought iron like its cousins. This would ultimately be its downfall in later years. The tower itself had four lifts, each capable of reaching the top in about 90 seconds. It also sported a circular shape, rather than the traditional square shape that the other towers had adopted. The whole tower and grounds were illuminated by fairy lights at night, and the tower had over half a million visitors in its first season. The building constructed around the tower's legs contained a ballroom, circus, theatre, menagerie and zoo animals, amongst various other smaller attractions. It was a four-storey red brick and terracotta building in an octagonal shape. The Beatles played the ballroom no fewer than 27 times, only topped by the Cavern Club itself. The grounds around the tower building comprised of a bandstand, a dancing platform, fountains, seal pond, tennis courts, restaurants and a large boating lake that contained a 40 metre water chute ride. Its grounds were enclosed by iron railings and separated into wooded areas, rockeries and floral displays. The tower grounds had a later addition of a giant permanent funfair that included a figure eight roller coaster, a switchback railway, donkey derby, and later a chairlift to ferry passengers up the hill to the tower. They also had a large athletics ground and stadium constructed in 1896 on the higher plateau behind the tower building with its own football team, New Brighton Tower FC. The stadium grandstand was eventually destroyed by a fire in 1919 and sold for housing in 1977. The tower closed in 1914 due to the outbreak of the First World War. Unfortunately, during this whole period, the tower structure was not maintained and became rusty due to the harsh salt fueled sea winds. The government attempted to purchase the tower for scrap metal during the war, but it was eventually dismantled after the war had ended. Its owners believed it to be structurally unsafe and too costly to repair. 
but controversy surrounded the decision, with experts claiming that it was safe and could have been easily repaired. By 1921, the tower had completely gone, sold for scrap, and all that remained was now the tower building and its ballroom. The building still had the legs of the tower inside its structure, forming part of the interior of the building. The tower building lasted right up until 1969, when it was destroyed by a large fire, the cause of which was unknown. And as these pictures show, you can still see the base of the tower intact within its walls. The rest of the buildings and attractions fell into disrepair after visitor numbers fell to the resort, and all were eventually demolished. Housing now occupies the top section of the site and only the grassy mound that the tower sat on still remains. Attempts have been made recently to resurrect the tower on the same spot, or at least build a modern version of it. These have so far amounted to nothing, but you never know, one day we may see a new tower peering over the Mersey, to remind people that Blackpool wasn't the only place with an iconic tower. Let's start exploring the site and see what remains today. So let's head up the hill onto the site where the tower would have been, along with the large building, which housed a circus and a ballroom and the usual sort of things you found inside the buildings underneath towers, just like the one in Blackpool today. Now all this again has been heavily re-landscaped. There used to be terraces here on different levels. I mean, you had various buildings on this level here, and also the roller coaster, the figure eight roller coaster, which went around those trees right there, and the fairground on the bottom side here. It's just so hard to imagine today, again, what was here, but hopefully I'm gonna help you visualize that as we make our way round. So while we're here, I'm gonna chuck in one of my good old fashioned photo fades, and try to show you what was here at one point and actually lasted longer than the tower and the building itself. And that was a rather large fairground just at the bottom of the hill here. They even had a figure eight roller coaster, waltzers, a big wheel, helter skelter, the usual fairground stuff, and a large boating lake at the top, which we'll see very soon. So as we make our way up the hill, you can see that it now levels out at this point. So this is the exact spot right in front of us here where the building would have been for the tower. So we would have been looking up at the tower right there now. And a large bandstand currently about here where we are now on this spot, overlooking this amazing view down towards the promenade and what would have been the pier just there jetting out into the River Mersey. We made our way just a bit further up the site of what is today a modern skate park just there. But there was a large building here overlooking the river in that direction. Just here where these trees are today. Absolutely no sign of that building whatsoever. No foundations, no bricks, no rubble, nothing. They really did clear this site or buried it very deeply. Just as I head off the beaten track in the trees. A couple of stones, but they don't look like dress stone. But I have just spotted this in the hedge here. A bit of stonework, definitely some remains of something here, and it runs along there. So like I said, there was a building here, and it's very unclear from the maps as to what that building would have been. So I couldn't even tell you what it was. I'll see if I can find out. If I do, I'll put it in below but it would have been some kind of a Victorian attraction, maybe an aviary or a promenade cafe or something like that. Again, it's just hard to imagine today, this huge tower being right here behind me. It's just a park today, but it would have been such a Victorian splendor and such an icon for this area. I mean, look at what the Blackpool Tower did for Blackpool and how iconic it is today. Well, that would have been the same right here. Only this one was taller, so it would have actually outshone the Blackpool Tower ever so slightly. So as we make our way now to exactly where the large building was at the base of the tower, 
I'm just going to show you a picture taken from right here, looking out in this direction. And we would now be inside the actual tower building and in the large room beneath the tower's legs. But you can see the splendour in there. And as I zoom back out, today you see this view, which is across the Mersey towards the docks at Bootle. And this unassuming football pitch, which is just so hard to imagine today. There's absolutely no sign of anything here whatsoever. Just a level piece of ground that everyone is playing football on. So we're going to head further away from the river now and to the back of the building over to what would have been the large boating lake pretty much where this uh, football court or tennis court is today. So I'm stood now right in the middle of what would have been the boating lake. It would have been left across the camera here all the way in front of us and right to the far side of this football court here towards the back end of it. So this would have been the little valley where the boating lake was and it went as far as the pathway in the middle there. Now there is this large banking behind us which has always been here as far as I'm aware. You used to d scale this banking down here probably with grand staircases etc down to the boating lake. This fence around the park here the perimeter of it pretty much follows the edge of the boating lake where it would have been. I think I would have been pretty wet where I'm stood now but it ended somewhere around this point here just beyond the park and then headed in that direction all down there but I'll put a picture in for you just so you can see what that lake actually looked like. Some of these pathways through the park here were the original route of the paths heading through the site towards the tower building and the large fairground that stood down the bottom end. So while we're here at the edge of the boating lake let's do another before and after picture looking right across the lake and towards the tower building on the far side. But notice that the tower has now gone from the shot and just the building remains underneath it. And as we make our way around the back of this site, just to the far side, we've got one of the original gates, which is still a gate today, which would have been much grander back in the day, into the tower grounds. But you can see here what appears to be well, an original wall anyway, it looks Victorian to me. And it heads all the way up the site there. So this would have probably been the boundary of the tower complex or even the original back walls of properties that maybe lined the edge of the park there. But let's head up onto this site a bit further up the hill here. Now whilst I'm stood in this spot, the reason I made the trek up the hill is because again, back in the Victorian period, there used to be a large water shoot ride right here and it started at the top of this hill so very much like what you see in the park at Scarborough today the water shoot ride and also East Park in Hull I have been on the water shoot in Scarborough there'll be a link to that video in the description but one of those existed here as well heading from behind the camera and down the hill behind me and into the boating lake like I said earlier this is now housing but the water shoot ride would have been somewhere, probably where that tree is at the back and heading down a ramp towards me into those trees, but they wouldn't have been here and straight into the lake at the bottom. So here's a look at the site from the other side and I've got my back to the River Mersey now. So right in front of us there would have been the boating lake and then heading round towards the tower building, which would have been right in the middle of that football pitch there with the uh, cricket pitch and the football pitch up on the hill behind it. And then down here towards the terraces and the fairground, which was at the lower level down near the seafront. So just in the trees where I am now, so I'm right on the edge of the River Mersey, you can see the road down there in the promenade. So on this section here would have been a figure eight roller coaster, which would have gone around these trees, which I think were here back then because there's pictures of these trees right in the middle of it. Now, there was a concrete foundation that the ride sat on. And I think we've just found it down here in the trees. 
So you can see the uh, old wall there, or the concrete foundation and a plinth, so there would have been supports sat on here for the roller coaster which I think was a what they call a side friction roller coaster not many of them left these days you can see bolt marks in the concrete and it runs all along here you can see down there but nothing much else as I keep heading off into the trees hopefully finding things I just find a bit of stonework and maybe a foundation or two that is it again back up to the main site up there where the tower building would have been and then this back section here there was a building just in front of us there and a couple of gardens and things at the side and then down to the promenade here which a lot of the old fairground in the, even in the 60s and the 70s survived all down the front here and along the seafront as I'm making my way off the site lots of rubble down here again red Victorian bricks as you can see just peeking out there again this could be no guarantee but this could be because it's quite uneven around here and very steep this could be a rubbish dump where they dumped a lot of the rubble for the remains of the building that was demolished after the fire and again I'm walking now on the promenade road what would have been the boundary of the uh, actual tower ground and you can see the old stonework there with the iron railings that have been severed off and uh, that runs all the way up here the roller coaster the figure eight roller coaster would have been just to my left here in these trees running along the side of me now I'm going to try and put a picture of that in just to show you what it looked like from the roadside here and then all the way down to the fairground which would have been right at the end here and the tower being up there at the top of the hill but as you can see absolutely nothing left today I just love these Victorian resorts that disappear and there's nothing left I mean there literally is nothing left unlike Crystal Palace where I actually found a lot of remains not here all being re-landscaped apart from this level that I'm currently stood on here and all the building remains completely gone no brickwork no stonework no fountain basins nothing